I am a big fan of the method of decomposition to factor quadratic trinomials. What I mean is one, two, three terms. One of them is x squared, one of them is just x, and one of them doesn't have any x's on it at all. I'd like to do three examples here to show you how I do it. Step one, take the number at the beginning and end, that's two and 12. I need two numbers that multiply to make whatever the product of those two is. Two times 12, that's positive 12, is positive 24. And those same two numbers that I find have to add to give me the middle number, negative 11. Now that can be tricky sometimes. This is probably the toughest part of the whole thing. Now what are numbers that multiply to give you 24? Well, 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, and 4 times 6. Now, those all multiply to give me 24, which is good, but none of them add to give me negative 11, mostly because none of them are negative. Now, they have to multiply to a positive, so I know that their signs have to match. Like, two negatives will multiply to give me a positive. And two positives will multiply to give me a positive. But if I have one negative and one positive, they're going to multiply to give me a negative, And that's not what we want. So that means we need to check out all of these pairs, negative 4 and negative 6. Those still multiply to give 24. But do they add to negative 11? No, they don't. They add to negative 10. Negative 3 and negative 8? Ah, those add to give me negative 11. I'm just going to fill it in here so you can verify for yourself that those are the magic numbers we're looking for. It's negative 3 and negative 8. Now, what do we do with those? Here's the decomposition part, okay? I'm going to keep my 2x squared, and I'm going to keep my positive 12. It's the middle term that I'm going to decompose or break into two separate parts. Negative 3 is going to get written in here with an x, and negative 8 is going to get written in here with an x. Now, some kids will see those and want to collect them like like terms. Negative 3x minus 8x, those definitely combine to give you this. But if you combine them, you're just going backwards, and we're trying to break this apart. So, this is what you want. Now, what you're going to do is common factor the first pair and second pair separately. Are there any numbers that divide nicely into both 2 and 3? No. Are there any letters that are common to both of these terms? Yes. In fact, you can find 1x in each of them. I know there are x squareds or two different x's multiplied here, but there's only one here, so we can only pull one out. And by common factoring, I mean write it in front of a set of brackets and divide each of those terms by it. 2x squared without one of the x's leaves you with 2x. Minus 3x without x is just minus 3. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing, but for the second pair. Make sure you take that sign with you. We're looking for two numbers that, or sorry, we're looking for a number that divides nicely into both 8 and 12. The answer there is 4. 4 goes nicely into both of those. And here's a hint. Whatever your leading sign is, here it's a minus, is also going to get written here as well. So I want minus 4. That's what I'm going to common factor out of these two terms. How do you do it? Well, negative 8x divided by negative 4 leaves you with positive 2x. And positive 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. Now, at this point, you'll know you've done it right if the brackets match. 2x minus 3 in this bracket, 2x minus 3 in this bracket. Very nice. Your final answer here is going to be that same bracket copied out once. And then the bits that are not in brackets into another set. X 
and minus four. That's why that sign was important to copy from here. It ends up in one of the brackets. Now this is your factored quadratic. If you are ever asked to check your work or if you want to check it on your own because you wanna be sure you have the right answer, your job is going to be to multiply these two binomials out. In my class, we call it foiling because you multiply the first terms of each bracket. Then you multiply the outside terms, that one with that one. Then you multiply the inside terms. Then you multiply the last term of each bracket. Get it? F-O-I-L, first, outside, inside, last. Whatever, let's just multiply it out. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times minus 4 is minus 8x. Minus 3 times x is minus 3x. Minus 3 times minus 4 is plus 12. And these two terms collect to give you 2x squared minus 11x plus 12. Oh, look, that was what we started with, which means, yes, we have factored it properly. This expression and this expression are the same thing. They represent the same graph, but they are written differently. One is in standard form, one is in factored form. Let's do this twice more. Now here we are presented with large numbers. I want to remind you, if you can common factor something out at the beginning, it's going to make your life easier. If you don't common factor this, you're going to be looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 180 and add to negative 24. Yeah, good luck with that. But if you notice that all of these numbers are divisible by 3, then you can do that first. Common factor a 3 out. What do you get when you divide each of these by 3? Here, you get 4x squared. Here, you get negative 8x. Here, you get negative 5. I just divided them all by 3, and the 3 goes in front of the brackets. Now, this is what I'm going to decompose. Now, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to just negative 20. See? 4 times negative 5. And those same two numbers have to add to give you negative 8. Now those we can deal with, right? They're smaller. Well, smaller than 180 at least. Numbers that multiply to 20. Let's see, we got one and 20, we got two and 10, we got four and five, and I think that's it. Now these multiply to make a negative. So any of these could be negative. Maybe it's negative one and positive 20. No, those don't add to negative eight. Is it positive 1 and negative 20? No, those don't add to negative 8 either. Is it negative 2 and positive 10? No, because those would add to positive 8, but that was the 8 we wanted. That tells me that it's probably positive 2 and negative 10. Those multiply to give me negative 20, and they add to give me negative 8. Those are the magic numbers. What do you do with them? The answer is, keep the first term the same, keep the last term the same. You're going to rewrite the middle term as those. That's positive 2 and minus 10. Now they each get x's because this had been x. And yes, when you combine those, you're supposed to be able to get that. If there happen to be other letters on here, just carry them down. This term and term, that term both get those same letters. And then we're going to factor this pair by common factoring and separately common factor that pair. Now I'm going to be careful about how I show that here. All right. Any number we can divide nicely by both of these. Yes, they're both divisible by 2. And there's an x in both, which means we're going to pull out a 2x. 4x squared divided by 2x. 4 divided by 2 is 2. x squared without one of the x's is just another x. And 2x divided by 2x is 1, because anything divided by itself is 1. 
Notice I divided both of those terms by its greatest common factor. Here we got negative 10 and negative 5. Those are both divisible by negative 5. Remember the sign at the beginning of the second pair, or I guess rather on the third term of this, after you've decomposed it, that's the sign you want to carry down. Negative 10x divided by negative 5 is positive 2x. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is positive 1. You'll know you've done it right if your brackets match, which they do. Oh, yeah. And so you've got your 3. That still has to stay at front. Your common bracket gets written next. And the leftovers, the things that are not in those common brackets,